one that I usually check for around about this time of year, so I thought I would do that again. And there are a few here, so I'll have a quick look at them, I'll show you what they are, say a little bit about them, not too much, because I'm not a great expert on, on fungi, but these are rather attractive. And they're a species uh, called Hyongiastrum triplex, one of the earth star funguses. And they're rather distinctive shape. There are several other species in the genus that occur. But the one we get here is usually Giastrum triplex. So we have had one of the others here, which I'm pretty sure is what this is going to be. So I'll turn the camera around and we will have a look at one or two of these that I've found. So you can see here we're on some quite rough ground, some quite steep ground with a lot of ivy growing over it. And a lot of this ground is essentially old, an old Victorian rubbish dump. So there's a lot of very loose, friable soil, bits of glass, bits of rubbish in there. But it's a place in the reserve where we reliably have these fungi here. Uh, let me try and tidy up a bit. As you can see, they're, they're quite an interesting shape of fungus. They've got this sort of array and then they've got this ball in the middle. And if, if I tap that, you might be able to see a jet of spores coming out. And these are related to another type of fungus you might have seen called the puff balls and the earth balls, which do similar things. They form these seed heads and when a drop of rain or something falls on them, the spores seed heads really the spores puff out and disperse so these are quite a distinctive shape and they form this sort of star shaped array around the outside which is why they get called earth stars when they first come up they are the ball is closed the these rays are closed over the top and they look a bit like a, a small dirty potato to me but then they open out the rays spread out, the, sea, the spore body comes out and as it, as it matures and opens up, the, the, the top opens up like that. So there's one or two more here of the same species. We've got quite a few more when you start to get your eye in. So there's another one here growing in, so I'm going slightly sideways, this one, of the same species. And again, you can see that seed, the spore body, see the rays again another one down here so that way you can see the, the shape of it a bit more and there were one or two more over this way we'll just wander this way uh, some other fungi as well which I don't know what species these are but we'll we might as well have a quick look at them whilst we're here. So there's some more fungi down here. Quite nice structure and quite nice shape to them. But these weren't the ones, these were obviously not the earth stars that we were looking at. The different species of fungus growing in this rather damp conditions. Let me see if I can find some more of the earth stars that we were looking at. I did find several before when I was just scouting around before doing this broadcast. Um, here's one reasonably out in the open. So again, here's another one. I'll take that leaf off the top of it so we can see it a bit better. do that. You could really get down on the level with it quite well and see the structure there. I need to crawl down to make sure I've actually got it in, in frame. Oops, there, there we go. So quite an interesting structure they have to them. Let me try and do this and see if I can puff it and see if we can see the spores come out. So a cloud of spores come out there and obviously what would happen 
in nature is that would be you know a drop of rain or a small mammal or something dropping even even a leaf falling on it would just puff those spores out and they would go flying away land somewhere else and if they landed somewhere with the right sort of conditions they could start to form a new group a new group of these fungi because this is just the fruiting body of the fungus most of what's going on with a fungus is the web of what's called mycelium the sort of fibers under the ground and the bit we see and the bit we easily identify is just the fruit uh, you could define that. So in some ways it's a bit like identity fruit when looking at the apples and saying that's how we tell an apple tree. So let me see if I can find any of the immature ones. I didn't see any before. I'm going to quickly run my eyes over the, the ground. It may be that they're all out uh, mature. They've all developed into the full stars by now. Can't see any immature ones. The immature ones, as I said, just look like a sort of dirty potato, I always say they look like. And gradually they turn into this, they open up, and as you know, they start out with quite a nice white colour. Oops. Now what's going on here? Just fighting with the technology. Don't think the Black Devil Tree Association. Uh, I think they might be uh, broadleaf woodland type things. Uh, they're freshly, freshly, when fresh, fairly freshly emerged, they tend to be quite white in colour, quite a pale colour. They start to darken up as this one that we were looking at first has done. It's a bit t more tan in colour, a bit browner. And then when they're really mature, they start to look quite decayed and rotted like this one down here. And I suspect that's still got some seeds in it. Yeah, it's still got some, some spores in it. I must stop causing the seeds. Still got some spores in it. So, still going. And I always like to come and find these every year in autumn. This is a, a sign that things are still working. Stuff's still coming out. And here they do seem to like this soil, this, this area of, sort of an old old rubbish dump so there may be something chemically in the soil that's different that makes it better for them there may be something in the plants that are growing here that they prefer i don't know anyway we'll probably end there on that one which is a fairly brief hopping on to have a look at some interesting fungus and i will possibly well i probably will be back on later this evening looking for bats and moths and such like down here